Africa. So we all winners. We all win. Everybody that has spent some little time here. The last in here. man standing. The last man standing. Who is that? I don't know. I think a curious guy, passionate, that always believed that life is no one straight line. That uh, is many things to look for. That passion is what it inspires another people. That believes that we don't know what we don't know, but not just the meaning. That you need to be looking for it. Right. And we have uh, we expose life, make things for every uh, different reasons. And I think they gave me the opportunity to meet amazing people and get exposed to information that many great clinician maybe don't have opportunity and i feel so grateful to be able to be the voice to say hey come up look at this this can be nice and the the, the results uh, pay for it how beautiful in this trajectory put this group of people together that they inspire me in one way or another one for years and i grow with them peter is like my father mariano is they really, as you will see the influence in my clinical part, in my lab side, my digital planning, in my computer planning. Everything has pieces of every single of them. Even the newest techniques about the new group with Dr. Arnett in that driven that I have for digital technology and planning and be able to try to put pieces together. But always trying to be like protecting that I don't want to hurt nobody because I decide to when I go out, out, out of politics and circles and I decide just to look what I believe that was better for dentistry, for patients. And believe me, there is too many battles that I, battles that I fight and people that, that they dislike that and follow on a specific path. But I just think that the combination of things, of flavors, is what it makes the better food. And at the end, Absolutely. you know, you're the result of the people that you surround around with. And, you know, I receive inspiration every day and I feel honored that I have people that I can join something. So since, without to go any further, um, I'm going to just present this, this uh, lecture. Honestly, I finished recording like at 2.30 in the morning. So my, my voice it doesn't have the energy that I put normally. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lecture that pretty much covered all this aspect that most of you guys that I speak today have a big piece of it. What you're going to see here is what I'm teaching my courses, traveling worldwide in 17 years that I've been doing this physiological occlusion in all different expressions. And, and this is just show cases that it shows that this is scalable, that this is easy to do, that is too many, everything is ready to do it, digital technology, materials, technology. But the most important part is, my lecture is not about technology, even that I have the opportunity to have a lot of equipment to make investigation and, and be able to question concepts. It is the fact that we want to find the best for new generations and we want to have that opportunity to get contagious with the, with the other part of the people. So. This lecture, as I say in my lecture, is going to be the easiest one because everything that you guys seen that I do, that I did in this patient, that I did in these cases, reflects the mentality of every single person that's been here for these eight days of sharing. So thank you so much. Uh, Nati, you can just play. Nine that. days. Nine, Nine days. days. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, time goes by quick when you're having fun, right? Yeah, my God, this is... We look at and I, we were talking and say, what are we going to do after this? And then we didn't even talk, what the hell are we going to do? We're going to be missing this. We've been talking more than ever. Uh, so this has been so fun. So by the way, Hamid, I want to say thank you because this has been such an amazing experience. The both of us together. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. All right. We're going to have the technical issues with my eight. That's totally valuable. <laughs> we don't have audio. <laughs> <laughs>
Are you, are you going to have to lip sync it now? I hope no. <laughs> I hope I don't want to have to talk because it's going to be. Oh, God, that would be funny if you have to run it and lip sync. I mean, you know, I cannot hear anything. No, I can't. I apologize. Hold on. Since all the foundation was created by my mentors and the people that I invite here, they inspire me in one way or another one, and that's how I implement different protocols and procedures. Eight or nine years ago, Mariano told me, and uh, he said, you cannot call this neuromuscular dentistry. You do things different, you combine things, and then you have an open mind. For many years, when I started utilizing this technology, and I started comparing and uh, taking advantage of neuromuscular dentistry, and I start seeing the arch of closure, always my thinking process was about to understand it will really f function as a hinge axis rotation. And with this technology and many, many cases, I did trying to review, and the behavior that I always seen is something different than what we most believe. I cannot find a rotation initial and then a translation. Independent if the case is stable or unstable, independent if the case is pre-op or post-operatory, even in the influence of posture, I cannot see the kinematics creating an initial rotation. So going deeper, I start seeing and checking for MRIs. And then when you see the physiology, this combines everything. What Rocaparo talks about the 50-50, look at the movement of the head when the patient make an opening because it's a combination of movements between the mandible and also into the cervical spine. So this MRI shows that pretty much we cannot see a rotation. Then I combine with what Rocaparo says. But now you're moving the maxilla towards the mandible and not necessarily the mandible towards the maxilla. And then we start making research and investigation and start seeing how much what was what the glenoid fossa can move against to the condyl. And that's how we became with the concept of cranial registration. Many of the patients that we treat, they have a normal range of motions. And in the proper protocol, what we're trying to do is to try to create clean pattern of closure. And we do that validating by having a posterior occlusion that will, will facilitate the range of motion. So this is the way that we try to 
reposition the mandible. We try to create clean patterns of closure and try to avoid all the nociceptive input. Here in this patient that we see the position where they hang in, is resting and breaking the anterior teeth. The difference between that comfortable position for the patient that is parafunctional, but is when he is resting and hanging, is equal to sit all the way the condyle up, and that's why the patient is breaking the anterior teeth. The range of motion is determined because the muscles always is going to create the function, and with repetition of this trauma, it's going to be breakage. But what we can see in this case, for instance, huge overjet, and then how is all this breakage possible? Of course, we can think in a solution to make a rehabilitation, but we definitely need to support the occlusion into the back to catch up the arch of closure to avoid that premature point that is the one that is creating the breakage. Here, we comparing opening and closes into the patient before treatment. We can see how the arch closure is like behind, is some proprioception or nociception in this segment, anterior segment. And then we can see here how is the movement. We can see that the condyles, they're not even equal when they made the movement. As a fact, that's what the reason that the patient has some displacement. When we reposition the patient with an orthotic here in this side, we can see how the curvature of the opath is recovered. Here, the orthotic is in place, and that gap that you see here is the product of being able to remove the model digitally to see the gap that we create uh, for the proper closure. Here, we can see how the condyles are more uh, harmonic into the mandibular movements. In the same way, we compare protrusives, protrusive pre-op and protrusive with the appliance in place, and we can see how the trajectory became cleaner. Even we can analyze the chewing cycles. And the chewing cycles, we can see it even deeper because we can focus not just in the two structures, we can focus in the internal part of the joints to see the game that happens and the dancing that is happening inside the joints. From chewing cycle to phonetics to compares, that the range of motion that we have in phonetics can be optimized by a reposition of the mandible. This is my beautiful family, my wife, my beautiful daughter, and the reason that I'm showing is because I consider that this was the only time that my daughter has a good occlusion. When the teeth came together, now we start seeing some signs and how the, uh, my daughter is clenching. Look like she doesn't have deciduous spaces and nowhere of the natural dentition that is the normal physiological process. Look at the gummy smile, and when we ask to open and close, proprioception always create an arch of closure that go to the incisal edges. That's why you can notice some breakage into the edges already. So this is the deep bite when we start. Look at the exostosis in the anterior segment that is showing a lot of pressure. Look at the anatomy, how deep and how trapped she is by her own occlusion. Pay attention to the tongue. Look how that tongue has no space and is working to support the posterior occlusion. So this is the process that we take the bites with the kids. It's a swallowing bite in combination with an anterior segment to create more stability. But also after that we do we do that, they start a process of introduction of the appliances. Okay, how are they? For me, okay, close, okay. since I wear an orthotic, she wants to know what an orthotic means. So the first appliance that we create was an orthotic to start testing if the mandibular trajectory was ideal. Oh. 
Then the second step, we put like uh, a special uh, a device to create uh, yeah. some. Okay, ahora di carro. Carro. Otra vez carro. 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 This is called friction play. Con la letra with the S. Okay. okay. And then, of course, we have Mariano helping us with the proper alignment before we transition Catalella to uh, Pistas de Planas or the Planas tracks. So this is the process of the craniocervical alignment to facilitate the proper equilibrium for the bite. And then we proceed to create the tracks. Abre, tap, 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 tap. They follow Open the principles of Close Professor fast. Pedro Plantes. Close fast. Oh. And you can see how we increase the vertical dimension. Of course, we want to check chewing cycles and function. And we can see how it's a great adaptation. But then we go one, st one step forward, and now, knowing that it's a deficit, we create some activation of appliances okay, to create a little bit of expansion, Abre. three weights into Abre. the upper, with Abre minimal grande. force, only Cierra to rápido. create presence. The velocity is always a good way to see if the trajectory is right. But we can see that we're creating the future. We definitely can change the world. The following case is uh, my wife's case. I present this case multiple times. Uh, it, I use this case because it shows uh, big damage into a condo. We can see the gradual degeneration. I write an article for the Compendium magazine that I show 50 years of research in this case of data that since 2002, I started doing instrumentation before, why before we get married and then different phases of orthopedic treatment that I attend. And then problems and comparisons that I was thinking that was more a muscular component. Being not aware there was something else that I didn't discover back then. So the process of the degeneration was creating more breakage, more distalization of the mandible, more loss of the anatomy, and more asymmetry. So we make a study with Mariano, and we say something is weird. We can see the mandibular trajectory is affected. It's a deviation in protrusive and a deviation in maximum opening. Also, we can see that when the patient make lateral excursions, we have limitations to do excursions one to one side. And we can measure and see how deficient is that side compared with the other one. We, in this study, try to compare different by registrations, including central relation. And here we can see how is the only way that I can see a condal that is rotating first. And it's because definitely we inhibit the normal uh, projection anterior. So the manipulation or depending on the technique that can create a hinge axis, but in we couldn't find any other relation with any other mandibular movements into the patient. We record phonetic chewing cycle, head position changes, and we couldn't find no relation. We utilize transelectrical stimulation and we fabricate an orthotic. Look how the bite went too much forward and look how the midline was aligned 
and the patient uh, couldn't tolerate the arthritis. It was an uncomfortable position. That's why she never wore it. So Mariano said this need to be some kind of adhesions. So we proceed to make different techniques that we implement, making distractions with pressure, creating a pivot exclusively into that joint to create a distraction that facilitate the breakage or the stretching of this. We combine it with the helicoid in lateral and protrusive movements. As Rocabaro say, lateral movement is really important to keep mandibular open. But after an exhausting workflow, we have to use transelectrical stimulation now to remove the lactic acid and, remo and relax the muscles to be able to get a bite registration. After that we finished the process, we noticed that how we increase the range of motion for 385 to 571 what it shows that definitely we gain more uh, stretching or laxity into that joint or it's going to be beneficial to take a bite registration. We proceed and we take the bite registration as you can see this condyle here shifts so now midlines are not aligned if we compare with the point that we start. The mandible was advanced but mostly in the right side, that was the side that the patient had the problem. The kinematics of the mandible was improved with the bite registration when we were making the confirmation. And this is the relation with the skull and the cervical spine in the pre preliminary phase. After the analysis, part of what we found was a tremendous discrepancy into the size of the candle. What it shows that was some kind of active uh, dysfunction. Look at the difference in the density and how much reabsorption we can have into that condom. We need to know exactly how is the condom. We know that it doesn't belong to be into the posterior part, that most likely you need to keep the integrity to be able to be between two convex surfaces, having the disc a biconcave, and do the, the different movements be able to come together with the disc. Ideally, we were supposed to have a balance, but when we have one disc that goes out, that immediately starts changing the pattern of movement. And then we can have combination of displacements anterior and medial to that during the process of opening and closing. Over time, this repetitive trauma, that is this displacement, can create a reabsorption. And that reabsorption is going to create a breakage of the dentition. This breakage of the dentition, we can compensate with therapy of the joint that is affected to try to distract it. And in presence of transelectrical stimulation, we can be able to restore the system and try to find out what we lose. We establish an orthotic between the teeth and this allows to make the muscles in balance what is going to help us to uh, the healing of the joint. At that point, we are capable to reestablish or the restorations into the mouth and then we expect in regenerations of the cauda. So then when we get into this phase, what we did is uh, you can see the midline steel shift. We use a uh, composite buildups into the last molars for six months to hold that bite. And that, during that process, we decide to start the restorative part. In the restorative part, we proceed and do three veneers non-prep to be able to enhance the anterior segment. But now that we finished this cosmetic part, was the time to fill this gap. The only contact that we have for six months was the two pivots into the back. Look how the mandible shift and look how the relation between the arches change. Trying to compensate the damage and create a stability. The aesthetics are ideal, natural, but the entire process need to continue. We need to take a bite registration to be able to stabilize the system. This is the way that we test it. We make 
rapid movements to the sides to try to lose the congruence of the joint and then we come fast to the final target to see we preserve stability. We also utilize transelectrical stimulation to know that we're getting the same imprints, what it shows that we have right trajectory. If we want to confirm it with technology, just because in many cases it's important to document it correctly and mostly for education purpose, it's important to be able to visualize that we were able to reestablish the harmony to the patient with this by registration. And then we proceed with computer uh, help to design temporaries uh, that is going to be occlusal toxic composite that we will be cemented. And using the features of the software, we can involve the movements that we pre record to make a pre adjustment of the restorations. We have the temporary restorations that they uh, composite that will be cemented and the process of cementation and then we will continue with the phase of equilibration. We can see how the cervical spine suffer changes that if we compare the before and after we can see how was some enhancement of the stability of the cranial cervical region. Then we cement the occlusal tops and we check and we can see how the range of motion that at the beginning was more stable was able to be to have a clean path. Now this is the initial trajectory, but of course chewing cycles need to be adjusted and we have a specific protocol where we utilize transelectrical stimulation in combinations of head movements to induce the uh, posture effects into the occlusion. Head rotations, head side bendings, flexion and extension is the way that helps us to clean the slopes. And of course, we fine tune the rest uh, utilizing cachu gum to be able to check the chewing cycles. We try to preserve that the marks and the voluntary and involuntary poles go to the same way. So that way is the patient develop muscle ingram and stability to that position. The following case is a case that we present in a course in France, and we can see the different phases of the patient. Now open B. Now open B. Open 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 restorations. So we can check the position and the posture of the patient in the preliminary phase. And we make all the different videos of the different movements of the head to be able to analyze the dynamics. And we're going to go mandibular movements and, and we're going to record canine board. guides and then all we the dynamics how much over close and, is. and then we can the check what is happening and what relation they have into the occlusion. Uh, now we can see the effect of canine guides and for instance in this patient we can tell that the canine guides are not functional because so look how stiff they are and still he is grinding his teeth and is strapped in his own and occlusion. And teeth together, you're gonna slide all the way to the right and on. So all this information collected with teeth together and teeth apart, it will tell you how is the stability of the temporal mandibular joint. Everything that we do is to record dynamics and that's a necessary required expensive equipment. We just need to follow a protocol that we condensate in what we call the seven steps of diagnostic. So every step of the treatment is evidence in the same way. Orthotics for opening and closing and look how the dynamics of the mandible has been improved. Phonetics are taken as a consideration and excursive movements. And we can see how that mandible is behaving and moving with more freedom. Right after we put the orthotic, we can see how part of the posture has been enhanced. The instruction for the patient is just to march, to move, be able to move the hips and break down any pattern. 
and then we are the patient to inhale, exhale, and relax. And we go exactly for the same records. We can see how the movements of the head now has more dynamics, how the patient was able to improve the range of motion to the cervical spine. And then we compare results. That's the beauty to be able to have technology or use records to be able to see how it's gonna be the different changes into the dynamics of the patient after that you create the stability. In this case, we went for a digital planning. This is how much we increased the bite registration. We can see where we have the condyles now that they're in more ideal position based in our thinking process. And look how much the bite was increased. We increased the bite about five, six millimeters, but also we have anteroposterior changes and it's noticed by the relationship between the cast to cast that is totally different than the pattern of occlusion that the patient has before. And then we go to start making the planning to develop the occlusal plane first because we need to uh, be able to level the occlusal plane with the TMJs. All the case has been driven by proper head position and technology that allows that the occlusal plane is equal and will resemble the SP and Wilson curve in the best way we, we can. This is the first try-in when we utilize the mock-up and then we take in the records with the mock-up. But in this case, we make two sets of restorations. We made the mock-ups just to be able to develop the technique, to show the technique, but also we make a full mouth rehabilitation in enamic material, a composite material with no preparations. So the bite registration that we took has the uh, planning to be facial driven. So the aesthetic and the position was more predictable. We proceed with cement the restorations. We contour them. In the anterior segment, the aesthetics that we make in the uh, mock-up was not exactly what the patient wanted. So patient wanted a little more longer and more dominant. So we handmade composite the six anterior teeth to be able to have the flow of the patient wants. We proceed with the equilibration. It's important the equilibration, the position to be able to have uh, the ideal posture. We equilibrate the patient based in transelectrical stimulation, involuntary pulses, but also we ask the patient to tap into the bite and the process, as I explained before, is to try to bring the two marks together, voluntary and involuntary. This was the static success we finished. That was right after the course, celebrated with the beer. But then for you guys, yesterday I communicated with him and I gave some instructions to another of my friends in Germany. Uh, because uh, he, my friend, is living in Germany now, and now uh, I give all the instructions of all the records that he has to take. This is the pictures of the posture. It's been three months, and you can see how it's been a big, big improvement into the posture of the patient. Alex, my friend in Germany, is asking to repeat it's a something. German word, but it's funny. It's Versicherungsgesicht. <laughs> You did it just to make me smile. No, this is important word. Versicherungsgesellschaft. I can, I can, I want to see your mouse. Seventy one, seventy one, seventy two, three, seventy four, seventy five, seventy six. So there we go for the normal phonetic. Fifty eight, seventy nine, fifty nine, sixty eighty. And then. Aschenbach. Aschelbahn. Aschelbahn. Again? Aschelbahn. And again? Aschelbahn. And then apparently this is a, something that they use in Germany to check the relation between the mandible and the occlusion. This is some of the internal, the intraoral shots that we take 
All the natological landmarks were included. The teeth were a little elongated, but look how we increased the vertical dimension. And then, of course, we need to uh, follow our great friend Francesca and take as a consideration chewing cycles. All this information was sent to me yesterday just to try to put this together. This was been definitely a marathon for me, but I think this is the best way to demonstrate that not always technology is the key to make cases. Aesthetic results are ideal, but the most important part, it was based in the seven records for diagnostic, the importance of the posture, the importance of the reflection of the face, because it will tell you how is the cervical spine, dynamics of the neck, that also is gonna describe how is that cervical spine, like I will take an X-ray. Mandibular movement that gives us an idea what's going on with the temporomandibular joints. If we have the opportunity to have a CBCT, a full analysis of the oldest structures can be great to make a, compre a comprehensive study. Models or digital impressions will validate everything that we see in the previous stages. They were facets, they need to correlate with the structures that present some damage into the joints, or also need to be related with mandibular movements or the head posture or posture to the in general. And then we take pictures that help us to determine where we're gonna position that incise alleged, because everything needs to be dried by the face. The first part that we see is a structural, and that has many connotations. But the analysis of the face, in the way that the face reflects, is definitely tell us how the vertebras are aligned. The most important part is to be able to understand what is normal. And to do that, we have multiple studies that we've been doing over years for fluoroscopy, CBCTs, that shows the real human dynamics when we execute all these movements. And based on this information, we can understand where is the problem. In neuromuscular dentistry, we use tens to take the bites. I personally combine it with different other techniques, but always try to use the tens, but I treat the joints as joints and muscles as muscles. Ideally, when we put all the elements together, we can have a great comprehensive case. The important part during the time that you take in the bite is to understand that the joints need to be analyzed correctly. So in that way, we don't wanna have a false positive. But also, we need to understand that the patient need to have the capability to swallow in a normal postural head position without corrections. So in the time that we take in the bite, we also influence swallowing patterns to set the bite and create what we call a close pack. I hope this lecture contains some of the information that has been clarified by many other speakers. I think the key is that we all continue evolving, that we all uh, try to combine ideas and maybe in the future we're gonna have better answers. Thank you so much. I have a wonderful night. All right, brother. Are you still there? I was on time. You see? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we made it through. Made My it God, through. Yes. Okay. All right. So thank, thank you, you for watching. Thank you for the opportunity to listen some of what I have to share. And um, I hope this. Uh, turn, off, turn off the other. Turn off the other. Nothing. Can you turn on the other? You're getting an echo. Yeah. yeah. So the idea is that we can put all these concepts together, even though we have different thinking process. And then we have the alternative, the alternative to use technology and measure and compare results. The perfect dream is that we're gonna be able to uh, use the technology that we have present and we able to make 
like a kind of workshops and workflows to try to find out not who is wrong or who is right, a better way to simplify workflows and a better way to facilitate the, the, the patient's life. Now, I always say, and I support um, Francesca 100% in what she think, and the reason is because I'm originally for a culture that hasn't, doesn't have the capabilities to uh, pay for technology. And when I go there and I travel and I teach, even that in the clinic over there, I have all the same equipment that we have here, is because technically we need to develop protocols to make it simple and affordable for these people. And that's what I'm trying to do this with this iPhone and try that people just check their I eyes. Think, I think better. what we put on, Javier, it has a lot of different uh, ramifications. I think we are showing what's, and, and our presenters showed that, you know, using the latest, what is available to everybody. I think we also show that a, a big common denominator was that everybody is looking for an easier or simpler sequence of treatment. We all want it simpler. However, when you have, uh, you know, for instance, I, I never have used uh, a T scan. And when I look at it and I'm like, wow, it, this is something that if you really want the next level, um, of precision that you, you know you should you could you should kind of put that in but uh moreover uh, this is never about who's right or wrong like you said um i think the the big underlying current uh that i almost whether you look at it from a neurophysiologic standpoint or just look at it from a physical medicine standpoint we have to contend and we have to teach about Posture, we have to learn about the craniocervical dynamics. These are all part of occlusion, whether you want to accept it or not, um, whether you want to mix it with COIS, uh, the programmer or not. Everybody seems to know uh, from the orthodontist to prosthodontist to it's, it's, it's too big, it's too much of an undercurrent not to come to the surface. Um, so I think our our, uh, our collaboration and our, our presentation had a lot of different uh, uh, variables that brought to the surface. And um, although we all would like to live in a simpler uh, life, uh, guess what? Uh, life only gets more complex. The reality is technology is coming to a point that I'm a highly believer and supported and I work every day in artificial intelligence. I work with companies that develop software and we every day trying to create protocols, but we need to provide information to that artificial intelligence. We need to create a standardization. We need to have the only way to be able to apply artificial intelligence is to be able to create protocols. If we don't learn how to implement protocols, we don't gonna be able to feed the information that is needed to create artificial intelligence. It's gonna be the time that we're gonna be able to walk into a cabin that that is going to read everything in our body or posture occlusion or sensor temperature the quality of the muscles and it's going to be able to digitalize the entire body and this is where the technology is going but without people with clinical experience with a mind that is always looking for disruption because unfortunately for artificial intelligence, you need to have pros and cons. You need to see the two parts of the equations. Intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence doesn't work only with positive outcomes. It works with failures because that's what creates the parameters. And I know all this because I work with Nemotech as a consultant and everything that we're trying to do is try to develop these techniques. And that's what we're thinking, what we fail, what we have good. So we have everything, everything is ready. But, but it's still, you guys need to, we need to have the passion for education because we need to leave, we need to don't let that everything became artificial. It's something that needs to come for that internal part of your heart because we as a physicians and involved with the dental industry, it's a talent, it's something that we have, it's a perception, it's a feeling, it's a vision. So anyways, thank you so much guys. Thank you, Hamid, I love you so much. Thank you for sharing this you amazing guys. time. And it's gonna be another time. For now, I'm gonna need like two days vacation and <laughs> I'm gonna turn my phone on, off.
And I definitely I uh, own to my office uh, to my family uh, a few days of resting. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you for the support. Bye bye. Bye.